Hey guys, it's Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Today we are going to take a look at how to play Revolution by the Beatles. Now, before we get into this, I'm in standard tuning, and I'm sure they're in standard tuning too, but there's a lot of debate on exactly what key they performed this song in. There's a Revolution 1, which was performed in A, but this Revolution is obviously different. It's higher pitched and it's, uh, it's also faster. So, um, this one being the most popular one is what I'm going to take a look at. This, the pitch of this is actually halfway between B and B flat. So uh, most people think it was actually recorded in B, and then just the tape, uh, the speed of the tape or whatever, just makes it you know kind of detuned a little bit. So anyway, this is going to be in B. But if you want to play along with the actual record, you're going to want to slightly detune your guitar. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start with this intro here, uh, very reminiscent of uh, Johnny B. Good. So we're going to be sliding into the seventh fret on the B in the high E string, just a little bar. All right, just doing straight down strokes on those two strings, or you can alternate picking if you want. Then we're going to play the tenth fret here. Just do it with your uh, third and fourth fingers. And then you're going to jump up to the at the very end to the 12th fret. And when you pick those two, you're going to bend up the the third finger on the um, B, uh, B string. So we have this. All right. And now we get into the actual song, which all the parts pretty much have two guitars that are doing different things. So I can only play like the rhythm guitar version. Uh, in the intro, which was this. All right, so that's just this, uh, a lot of this kind of the, those kind of uh, rock blues chord shapes. Uh, we have the seventh fret on the low E, ninth fret on the A. So you pick that twice. Then hammer on when you pick the chord the next time to the 11th fret on the A. And then back to the original chord. Then just take that figure and move it down one string. And then back. Then we're going to go down after, after going through those chords a couple times to the second fret, the same thing here, the second fret on the low E string. Okay, so now that is a big jump from to here. Now you can do all of this right here as well. Which makes that jump easier, but it's a lot more difficult stretch because the fret is so much larger. So just make up your mind which, which what you want to do. All right, so over that we have this little. So that's just that same shape here at the. It's basically doing the octave of that rhythm part. Play the same figure there. You just hold it. So you did it twice, and then. So this is now a bar across the seventh fret on the G, D, and A string. Pick the fifth fret, a little bit muted. I mean, fifth string, a little bit muted. And then hammer seven and nine on the D string. And then hit the three strings together. Do that twice, and you're back to the beginning. Keep going here. And then when it goes down to the F sharp, you just kind of join them down here at the second fret, doing the same thing. All right, then we have this part. All right, 
So that one's kind of weird. It's actually a C sharp chord with a G sharp in the bass. So you can just do the power chord first, kind of for just the bottom four strings there. I'm holding the fourth fret across the A, the A string and the, and the E string, and then the sixth fret here on the D and the G. Now move it to a standard power chord shape for the next chord hit at the second fret on the low E string. And then repeat now that when you do the next one, add this, makes it a C sharp minor chord. So we have this. We have. And then. So that's power chord of the fifth, seventh, then fourth, then second. Which leads back to the chorus. And once again, you can just move it up here, make it. All right, before we get to this ending lick of the chorus, I'll show you what the second guitar part is doing on top of it. It does this. All right, so we're just playing a little, kind of a D major chord shape, but up here at the 11th fret, and then to that same thing we did earlier in the high part. And then here at the seventh fret, we're gonna start this little lick. So it's, hit this six times, slide from uh, nine to 11, and over to nine on the D string. And then start over. And then we have this little ending phrase that ends the chorus. All right, so it's just, basically the easiest way to do it is just kind of hold a bar across the second fret here on the low um, bottom three strings. Pick the low second fret, then hammer on two to four on the A, and then pick two on the D string. Then, Everything's the same, except now it's gonna be the fourth fret on the last string. The first time you pick it, you're gonna pick that low string twice, and then just once. All right, so that pretty much takes care of all the rhythm parts. We have just uh, the kind of verse rhythm and the, the chorus. Uh, but then we do have a little solo in there that kind of sounds like this. And then he does this little maneuver. All right, so kind of not much going on, just kind of creating noise if he wants to. So it starts with this. You're gonna be playing the uh, little finger of the 14th fret on the high E string, 14th fret on the B as well. And you can pick that, and you, you're kind of exaggeratedly bending the B string with a lot of exaggerated like kind of vibrato on it. Just don't, don't really worry about keeping it in tune. It's just tries to create that chaotic effect. All right, so then the piano plays a little bit and then we have the... So that's just slide into the seventh fret on the G and then the high E string together. Then six, five. All right, and then the melody notes, which is seven, five on the B. Six on the G string, then seven on the B again, then five, seven on the high E. Then back over to the B string. Some more of that exaggerated vibrato on the seventh fret on the B string. And you can start slowly kind of bending it up. And you'll hear some of this later on in the song too when it's kind of fading out. And he's doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then at the, so it continues with the same, you know, like chorus riffs. To the very end, we have two chords that end it. They sound like this. All right, so that's just basically third fret here on the fifth string, then bar the, your finger across the fifth fret, 
the, across the second, uh, the first, second, third, and fourth strings, and then down a fret. All right, so that takes care of all the riffs and you know chords and solos for uh, Revolution. It's pretty unique, and like I said, make sure you get your guitar in the proper tuning, um, or just get the sound of the song in your head, and then just try to play these parts along with it, maybe with a second guitar player helping you out. All right, I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com. Bye-bye.